I want to talk on boldness. For our Lord that we serve, He is the commander of the armies of heaven. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is also called the Word. And the Word was in the beginning with God. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. I desire to, to, to share something with you on boldness. And, and therefore I go to two kings. Chapter 13, verse 18 and 19. So I read. Now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked up them and struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times. He exclaimed. Then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will have victory only three times. Elijah foretold victory over Israel's enemy and instructed the king to perform a prophetic act. The king did so, striking his arrows against the ground three times. But the paltry efforts angered Elijah. Why not five or six? Perhaps more. The king had been too tentative in his assumptions about God's promise. He didn't understand how thoroughly God wanted to intervene. Scripture urges us to be unassuming and modest in our relationship with others. But God invites us to be bold and assertive in our request of him. Why would he say in Hebrews 4 from verse 16 and so on, that we should come boldly into his throne room of grace, so that we can receive grace in that hour of need, boldly, unafraid, not holding back, but come to him, to our heavenly father. He wants to bless us with whatever the request is. That's because he is able to do abundantly beyond what we can ask or think. Yes, He wants to do. He draws us into a relationship of extravagance, the kind that says like Jacob, I will not let you go unless you bless me. You find that in Genesis 32, 26. Those who come to God with childlike faith must believe that he doesn't give reluctantly or offer just barely enough, but that he is a wealth of resources waiting to pour out himself and his blessings on those who ask. He always has more than we need, because before we pray, he already knows what we need. That's what the Bible says. He knows it. So when we come bold and when we begin to pray for something, He knows how much and what we need. And then He can give more, for He is always prepared. He always knows what is happening tomorrow. Hmm? This ought to encourage us. We come tentatively with small prayers, when really we are invited to pray bigger. We have to push past appearances, not only outward appearances, but even our subtle assumptions and negative experience in the spiritual realm and be bold at His throne. We need to pray kingdom prayers with an awareness of the vastness of the vision of His kingdom. The size of our prayers will determine the size of our victories. I pray, Lord, give me big visions and then boldness to pray for them in faith. May I never settle for small victories when I could have asked for bigger ones. I pray you and I ask, Father, bring us to that place in our spiritual lives to be like Abraham. When you said, next year, this time, Sarah will be with a child. And he didn't allow his 
himself to be due to unbelief, be held back in his faith. But he called the things that did not exist, Lord. He called in boldly as if it exist. And I pray you this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk 